Okay, today what we're going to be looking at is how to create a spline inverse kinematics uh, rig here so that you can get this this kind of an effect uh, handles here. You can use this maybe for a stethoscope, you can use this for uh, a catheter, any number of things. So we're going to set that up today. Alright, so let's go to a new document here. We're going to do something a little bit uh, shorter, more simple, so that we can see the point. We've set up a cylinder primitive. Going to make that editable. We're going to set up some joints, so we want to go to our XY view. Going to grab our joint tool. If you're wondering where I got this menu from here, you just go up to character you click on this part right here, it pops it out and you can drag it over into your uh, interface. We're going to take the joint tool, you want to go to options and under modifiers down here, you're going to leave everything up here the same. Uh, actually, we're going to turn off the root null, that just creates a null when we create a joint chain, we don't necessarily need that in this situation. And we're going to make sure that these modifiers here are set up. This is not the default. You'll want to switch them uh, to draw. When you hit the control key, we're going to want it to split. And when you hit the shift key, we're going to want it to draw aligned. And so now we're ready to draw with our joints. So the first joint, we're going to draw at the bottom. And actually, if you want to go ahead and go over here and enable snapping, this will help us to set things up a little bit easier probably already familiar with some of the snapping tools. So we're going to uh, go ahead and start drawing our joints. And we're going to have to draw one for each uh, edge loop that we have here uh, if we're going to want this to function correctly because this is going to allow it to bend at each edge. So we're going to hold down the shift key. We're just going to create joints. And you can just kind of eyeball it. doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now we have our joints. Something that's very important, um, we have this long joint chain here, is we're going to take it out of the hierarchy under the cylinder and have it on its own sitting out here. What's very important is we want to select this parent joint and we're going to hit a line and what that's going to do is it's going to align all these other joints to that, the same axis and everything else, otherwise things will get kind of messed up later. Alright, so now we've aligned the joints. Now we're going to want to create our spline. Easiest thing to do is start off with a linear spline. I'm going to hide our joint for just a second here. And I'm going to start at the same place that I started for the joint chain. And we're going to, basically this is going to be our method of controlling this. So you create as many points as you want handles uh, to be able to control this, this spline later and be able to bend it. If you notice on the one I showed at first, there was four handles total. So we can, uh, in this one we can actually just go for three. So we'll put one kind of halfway and then one at the top here. I think that should be fine. Alright, and then we're going to make this spline actually a, a B-spline. It gives a nicer curve to a spline. We're going to unhide the joint chain here. Alright, and now on the joint chain, we're going to want to right-click and go under Character Tags to IK Spline. Under the tag, we're going to drag the spline down into there. Under a line, we're going to keep it, uh, we're going up the Y here, so we're going to align it to the Y. Um, we're going to keep the axis as Z, because if you notice, this is uh, the joints here, the first joint has a Z axis heading up this way, so we're going to um, follow suit there. Um, the end is your very last joint, you might have to go digging for that, um, so we'll pop that in here tells the uh, spline IK where to end. We're going to leave this at fit. We're going to leave aim at joint. 
Um, for the twist, uh, we're going to pick object. Uh, I haven't really experimented with these. Objects seem to work on the other one. Um, and the angle, that's, you know, HPV as we're used to with angles, rotation. Um, we, can, we can leave it to uh, the B for right now. Uh, but you can experiment with this, maybe even get better results. This is just uh, what I was able to get to work for me. So, all right, so now we're going to create some handles. Um, so if you go here and you hit Add, um, there's no handle created yet. Um, but what you're going to be able to do here is uh, when you hit Create, uh, it creates a new null object. And we can rename that handle 1. If you notice when I select it, it, it comes up at the same place as our first point that we set was on that spline. And that's because now that it has a spline reference loaded up in the inverse kinematics, the, uh, the spline IK tag, um, it knows where to set it. And so for each one of these uh, points, if there are four, we do this four times. In this case, there's three. So we're going um, to add another one and then create it. It creates a new null object. So we're going to name that handle two. And if you notice, it's where the second point of the spline is. We're going to go back to the tag here add another handle or name that handle 3. Now we've got our handles and they all have twist turned on. You could turn that off if you wanted to. Um, but we have our handles, we have our ability to control the, and if you look at that, it gives us great control. Uh, but if you notice, um, the tube doesn't go with it, the cylinder doesn't go with it as we would like for it to. Um, so this is a point at which we are going to bind the joints to the to the polygonal mesh here. Um, what's really important to do here is not only select the parent joint, but you also want to select its children. So that selects all of the joints. You're going to shift select the cylinder as well, the polygonal mesh in question here. And then we're going to hit bind. Um, no, that's not the result I was hoping for. Well, anyway, okay, so here's what we do now is... Uh, once again, we select the joint. We're going to select the children as well. And here in the joints, we're just going to drag it in here. Now we have all the joints included here, which is great. That's what we're looking for. We're going to hit auto weight. It's going to automatically weight this. Uh, you could paint the weight on there, but we're not going to worry about that now. Um, so now if you notice, this skin has popped up um, on, the, uh, on the cylinder uh, as a child of the cylinder. And we should be set to go here. Uh, we should be able to grab one of our handles, indeed, and be able to, uh, to bend our friend here. Um, if you'd like a little bit more uh, smooth deformation, you can pop it in a hypernerve there, and just hit op, held down the option key and selected hypernerve, um, and that allows us, when we grab a handle, you'll see a little bit smoother deformation. You're seeing it pop around a little bit there because I have the snapping on. If you turn the snapping off, it looks a lot smoother there. Um, and so this is really beautiful. It, it's based on the, the B-spline that we have, the B-spline points. You notice if you select the spline here, you can see those points there. Um, so it enables you to have uh, some really great control over this uh, cylinder object. And as you can imagine, you can apply this to catheters, stethoscopes, uh, anything tube-like in nature. Um, hope this helps you and hope you're able to uh, come up with some uh, uh, great new techniques based on what I've shown here today. Thanks.